All right, in this video, we're going to um, try to solve some systems of equations using matrices. Specifically, we're going to use a technique called Gaussian elimination. So uh, here's a system of equations. So 3x plus 2y equals 5, and 2x minus 5y equals 16. So you might already know a bunch of ways to solve this system, and that's fine, but um, this is a different way. Uh, it's a pretty convenient way, actually, and uh, you know you can program a computer to do it pretty easily, and that's pretty nice. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this system into a matrix. Um, so my matrix is going to have two rows and three columns. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm really just going to take the coefficients and the constants from this. So you'll see. So I put a 3 and then a 2 and a 5. So it's like I'm getting rid of all the, the kind of variables and the equal signs, kind of the unnecessary stuff, sort of, uh, in terms of calculations. And then uh, row 2 is just going to come from the second equation. So it's going to be 2, negative 5, and 16. So that finishes off my matrix. So uh, when I do this, uh, I, have, I have kind of an x column, a y column, and then uh, the constants, or the things that it equals. Um, so that's really important that you recognize what each column represents, um, because at the end we're going to have to use that to kind of find our answer. Uh, so some things that I'm allowed to do. I'm allowed to swap rows. So I could take row 1 and swap it with row 2 if I wanted to. Uh, I can multiply a row by um, any non-zero constant. Uh, so if I wanted to, I could take row 1, multiply by 3, and that would give me 9, 6, 15. Uh, but I don't want to do that right now. Uh, and then what I can also do is I can add or subtract rows. Um, so what I'm going to end up doing is combining those things uh, into steps. And what I'll do is I'll try to show you what I'm doing between steps. Um, my goal is to end up with a matrix that looks like this, so 1, 0, A, and then 0, 1, B, and then having done that, I'll know the solution to the equation. So the solution to the equation will be x equals A, y equals B. Um, so let's see if we can do this. So first thing I'm going to do here is take a look at the matrix and see what the easiest thing to do is. So I think the easiest thing to do is to subtract row 2 from row 1, and then I'm going to make that the new row 1. So I have row 1, row 2, I'm going to call them R1, R2, and let's do that. So I'm going to do row 1 minus row 2, and then leave that new result in row 1. So the matrix will be 3 minus 2, so I'm doing row 1 minus row 2. So 3 minus 2 is 1, 2 minus negative 5 is 7, and 5 minus 16 is negative 11. Um, and I didn't do anything to row 2, so I'm just going to copy that down. So I have that. Um, now the next thing I need to do or the next thing I want to do is I'm, I'm trying to get 1, 0, and then something, and then 0, 1, something. So what I'll do is I'll subtract 2 times row 1 from row 2. So I'm going to do row 2 minus 2 R1. And I'm going to leave that result in row 2. So the first row doesn't change. And then I do 2 minus 2, 0, which is good because that's progress. And then uh, negative 5 minus uh, 14. So negative 5 minus 2 times 7. So negative 5 minus 14 gives me negative 19. And then I have 16 minus 2 times uh, negative 11. Uh, so that overall gives me 38, which is pretty high. So what I'm doing is I, I like it when the numbers get smaller. I'm not really doing that in this case, but it's okay because now what I can do, take row 2, and uh, just multiply through by negative 1 19th. So uh, that's going to give me the 1 that I'm looking for in that row. So negative 1 19th times row 2, and I'm going to put that result in row 2. So that gives me 1 7, negative 11, didn't touch row 1 at all. And row 2 becomes 0 1 negative 2, which is good, because now that row is actually done. And what I'll do is I'll now use that row to create a 0 in row 1. So I'm going to do row 1 minus 7 row 2 and then put the result in row 1. So that will give me, uh, row 2 is not changing at all this time, uh, so 1 minus 0, which is still 1, and then 7 minus 7, which is 0, so that's ideal, and then I have negative 11 uh, minus 7 times negative 2, so negative 11 plus 14, uh, which is 3. So the answer to the solution, or rather to the system, is x equals 3, y equals negative 2, and then I can check that. So the check, 9 minus 4 equals 5, and 6 plus 10 equals 16. So I took the x and y values and I plugged them back into the original system. So um, that's a 2 by 2 system, so two equations and two unknowns. Uh, if you understood that, you kind of understand everything at this point. So you could totally stop this, 
what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do a 3x3 three three system, which is going to take a lot of steps. Um, so here is my 3x3 three three system. So if you understand what's going on, you can try to solve this on your own and then maybe just look at the work or whatever. Uh, it's probably going to take a lot of writing. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this into a matrix. So uh, I've got an X column with 2, 4, and 3. I have a Y column with negative 1, 2, and 2. And then a Z column with 3, negative 1, 4. So I'm pulling coefficients. And then I have a constant column, so these are the things that equal 3, 38, and 10. And that closes that off. So here, uh, I don't know, there's probably not a best way. Uh, I see two ways that I could create a 1. I'm just going to go with the first one that, that looks good to me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do row 2 minus row 3 and store the result in row 2. So I'm doing row 2 minus row 3, storing the result in row 2. So uh, row 1 doesn't change at all. So... Uh, I get 4 minus 3 is 1, 2 minus 2 is 0, negative 1 minus 4 is negative 5, and then 38 minus 10 is 28, and then row 3 does not change at all. Um, I don't know, I'm just looking now so to see what I can do. Uh, now I would like to create 0, so I have a 1 in column 1, I'm going to use that 1 to create zeros in the rest of column 1, so I'm going to do row 1 minus 2 times row 2 and store the result in row 1. So uh, let's see. Row 1 minus 2 times row 2, store the result in row 1. So row 2 and row 3 do not change in this case, so I'll copy those down. So now I'm going to do uh, 2 minus 2 is 0, negative 1 minus 0 is negative 1, 3 and then plus 10 basically is 13, and then 3 uh, minus 56 is negative 53. Okay, so I don't know if it's getting better, but I'm going to keep going, so I'm going to do row 3 minus 3 times row 2, and that'll create another 0 in the first column, and that's progress. So, let's see, row 2 and row 1 don't change. Um, now I have 3 minus 3 is 0, 2 minus 0 is 2, uh, 4 plus 15 is 19, and then uh, 10 minus 84 is negative 74. Okay, so let's, uh, let's keep going. So I'm kind of done with column 1 now, so now I need to start working on column 2. Um, so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to do row 3 plus 2. 2 times row 1. So uh, row 1 actually already has a 1 in column 2. It's just a negative 1. Uh, so I'm going to use it. So let's do that. So row 3 plus 2 times row 1. Uh, row, yeah, row 3 plus 2 times row 1. Leave that in row 3. So rows 1 and 2 are not going to change here. So let's copy those. Okay, so um, I've got 0 plus 0. I have uh, 2 and then plus negative 2 is 0. And then I have uh, 19 plus 26 is 45. And I have uh, 28 plus 100 something. Uh, what am I doing here? 2 times row 106. Uh, so, or no, I don't. I have negative 74 minus 106, uh, which is negative 180. Okay, so that's pretty hard to do. It's hard to keep track of all this, because uh, although you can't see it, I can't actually see the whole screen while I'm doing this. Uh, so it's a lot of remembering stuff. Okay, next thing we're going to do is uh, 145th times row 3. I'm just going to get a 1 in that row and leave it in row 3. So pretty much everything's getting copied this time. Like this, and then I can go through and I get this. Alright, so that's a lot of progress, um, and I can kind of finish it off from here. Uh, so I'm going to obviously use row 3 now, uh, and eliminate the negative 5 in row 2 and the 13 that's in uh, row 1. So let's do row 2 first. So I'm going to do row 2 plus 5 times row 3. Row 2 plus 5 times row 3, leave it in row 2. So row 1 does not change. Uh, row 3 does not change, and I am doing row 2 plus 5 row 3, so 0 plus 0 is that. Uh, the whole idea was to get a 0 here, and then 5 times negative 4 is negative 20, add it, I get 8. 
That's good. So I actually already know now that x is equal to 8 for this system. I'm going to keep going. So row 1 minus 13, row 3. And uh, so row 3 is not going to change, row 2 is not going to change. And then here, uh, hopefully you've followed along with the concept so far. Um, so I get to this. So now what I'm going to do is I have to start a new page, so I'm just going to copy that matrix over. So I have this. Um, what I'm going to do at this point is kind of swap some rows, and I'm also going to uh, take the liberty of multiplying the first row of the current matrix by negative 1. So I'm going to swap it around so it looks like I want it to look. Um, so I move row 2 of the matrix on the left up to row 1. I moved uh, row 1 of the matrix on the left to row 2, and I multiplied through by a negative. And then row 3 stayed where it was, which gives me this. Um, so now I know the solution to the system if everything went well, which it honestly uh, might not have because this process uh, involves a lot of adding and subtracting. Uh, so I get this, so I should check it. So this is the system that I was solving using this process. And uh, what I want to do is just plug in the values. So let me plug in the values and see what happens. So I get 16 minus 1 minus 12 is 3, 32 plus 2 plus 4 is 38, 24 plus 2 minus 16 is 10. Okay, um, so that's two examples of using Gaussian elimination. Uh, it's really not that hard. Uh, you just kind of have to like go at it, uh, get a 1 in, a, in the first column, use it to eliminate everything that's not that 1. Uh, get a 1 in the second column, use that to eliminate everything that's not a, a 1 there. Um, and then get a 1 in the third column and eliminate everything else. Uh, and what you're left with is the answer. So it's kind of a neat method. Um, I hope this was helpful, and uh, good luck.